Hello, art parents. Here we are at the last lesson for the year. I can't believe we're already in May. Um, as you know, May goes by really quickly. It gets really busy. So please, please contact your teacher this week if you can. See if you can get a lesson on the schedule um, so that you can make it happen for this month. And then if they're too busy and it's too crazy, of course, be sensitive to that. We've got SAGE testing going on and um, even though a lot of it, a lot of the teachers, when I surveyed the teachers, said that they definitely wanted a lesson in May, they thought it would be a good break for the kids and something fun for them. Um, you know, you want to be sensitive to whatever they need, and most importantly, get that scheduled early, um, so that we're not trying to squeeze it in at the end because they hate that, um, with with reason. Okay, so onto our artist for this month. This is Berthe Morisseau. She was a French painter born in 1841 and an influential part of the Impressionists and kind of really inspiring because um, women at this time really were kept in the home. I mean, they were really kept domestically and artists, um, women artists weren't allowed to go to school and they didn't get the chances to show like men did. It wasn't seen as a profession, it was seen as a hobby for women at this time. And um, Barrett did a great, I mean, she's a great painter um, and was really well respected in art circles and actually outsold um, Monet, I'm trying to think of who else, let me find it in the notes really quick, Renoir and Sicily. So, so you know, there you go, in her lifetime, not, not since, but in her lifetime. Um, I love Edward Manet said of her, this woman is an exceptional painter, too bad she's not a man. Um, and I think that's just so telling and so interesting, but so phenomenal that she married and had a family and was able to juggle a, you know, a surprisingly great art career. There were few women painters from this time that really managed to make a name for themselves. And on top of that, Bert died at a young age. She, um, she died at 54 of pneumonia. Um, so just as we talk really quick, we'll take a look at her paintings. I love, I mean, she really exemplifies that impressionist style, just loose, quick, interesting strokes. The colors aren't, um, aren't carefully blended, but they're allowed to kind of stand out on their own. And really impressionism is all about just giving an impression of a moment, not getting, not getting caught up in the details, which I think is really liberating as a painter if you've tried it at all. Um, I know a lot of you guys are artists and, and also really interesting and lively and fun um, just to view and to see. Um, so I think the kids will really enjoy this, um, enjoy this project. So, um, so Bert was um, born to a middle class family, so they were kind of wealthy, able to um, be educated by a tutor at home. And she and her sister painted and were even taken to Paris to um, kind of go to the Louvre and study the old masters and reproduce their works and learn to do landscapes. She was a big fan of plein air painting, so painting outside. And she was the one who kind of um, encouraged Manet to do that. And as you know, Manet was uh, like one of the founders of Impressionism. I mean, he's one of the fathers of Impressionism, so kind of um, Manet and Monet are kind of given credit for that. And she married Eugene Manny, who is um, Edward's little brother. And they had a great friendship throughout their life and were, um, were kind of, you know, teachers and, and um, you know, they helped each other with their paintings. There's a lot of documentation of, of her influencing him and teaching him, helping him, and him doing the same for her. Actually, there's kind of a funny, um, a funny um, anecdote of her giving, well, he took a painting to the salon for her, like delivered one of her paintings. And when she showed it to him, she said she, was, she wasn't thrilled about a few details. And so he kind of took that as an invitation to make some changes and made some changes to her piece. And then when she, you know, got to the salon and saw it, was like, um, hello, I didn't mean you could change it, and was a little bit miffed and wrote about it, which is kind of, I kind of a fun thing to see these, or to see the anecdotes, the stuff that's real everyday life, um, gives these, these people more dimension, right? Um, so I love just interesting paintings, this one hanging the wash out to dry, look at those just great strokes, 
kind of a limited color palette. I didn't give a lot of paint choices. One, because I had to cook the paint to get the paint myself. And, you know, we don't want to make tons and tons. Um, but also, we don't, I mean, sometimes it's nice to work in a limited palette. Um, it kind of gives you, I don't know, it just kind of gives a safe, like, nice harmonious feel. But take a look at the texture in her paintings and the lines. Um, just such, like, such boldness, such liveliness. I mean, it almost, like, it almost feels kind of like that same feeling of Giberti, where it almost has a three-dimensional effect to it, which I think is just so phenomenal. She's such a great painter. Um, she also was, she was known for mixing media. So, um, so that's what we'll be doing today. Um, I have one more painting. I love this one. So we'll take a second and just see. I mean, isn't that beautiful? Just that tender, sweet baby. And look at like the delicateness of the veil over the crib. I mean, just, just gorgeous. Um, so today for our project, we're gonna mix some media. We're gonna use um, two medium, um, two media mediums that were um, common with the Impressionists. We're gonna start out with oil pastels. And I don't even really want the kids to take the time to pencil in their work. I know there'll be some that just have to do it. Some kids cannot let go of their pencil. Um, but encourage them to just, just take the time, or just not to take the time with the pencils and just go ahead and start with the pastels and you know really accentuate that, like the loose, free, full, free flowing strokes of the Impressionists um, and, and say, you know, just give that a chance, give it a try on this. Um, so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna just quickly put in our details and, and I'm not gonna get too, too stressed out about it, too worked up about it. And um, I'm gonna mix in some colors because that's what the Impressionists did. But I'm not, I'm not really taking the time to get it. I mean, look at this, it's just, you know, crazy and in there. And, and let's see, let's put, let's put a little, little girl like picking flowers in the middle. Gonna make her hunched over and make her skirt in there. And I'm just gonna let the like let the pastels make make it for me. And then just to get you guys moving along. Um, then what we're going to do with that, sorry, don't do that with your kids. That's such a bad habit. Um, I just forgot to put a cup of water over here. Um, but then you're just going to go ahead and go in and I've got this paint that's been thickened. Um, and I just want them to, to go ahead and just like scoop up and put in a few, you know, really thick, nice impasto strokes into their painting. And really this is just meant to be kind of, you know, kind of an accessory to the, um, to the, to the pastel. It's not going to fill everything in. We've got some sanded paint and then some, just some thickened paint and, and just say, I mean, like show, show them how like the colors are blended and they're interesting colors in there. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw in a little purple in my grass to make a shadow over here. And I'm not going to work the paint around because the more I push it around with the brush, the flatter it's gonna get. So I'm just gonna let it have some thick strokes in there, be kind of interesting and different, and, um, and just kind of a loose, you know, just a loose, quick piece. It's fun to do, it's really liberating once you kind of have done this a little bit. It's just really enjoyable to work in that loose freestyle. Um, as always, let me know if you have any questions or anything I can do for you. You guys are fantastic. Um, for the people who are coming, it's going so well, and the teachers just overwhelmingly are so positive. Um, there's so much positive feedback. There have been a few teachers frustrated. It looks like we've lost a few volunteers throughout the year, and of course, they're not the ones watching this video, so no reason to, you know, lecture here. But, um, but I really will encourage you, and in the letter I'll send out tonight, just, you know, please make your appointments early. Um, if you've kind of lost interest, let me know and I'll cover your class for you. 
let's not leave the teachers high and dry. Thanks so much, you guys. Fantastic work. I'm so grateful for you. Um, also, along those lines, there's a little, there'll be a little gift on the art cart that you can uh, just grab a little appreciation gift. I'll put names on them to make sure everybody gets one. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.